In this brand new episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to do seven trash to treasure projects. We're going to take this hodgepodge of unsightly stuff and turn it into some very marketable items that are sure to sell. Also, today is the day that we're going to launch all our new products that are going to be in our Etsy store and on the website. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive into this week's episode. One quick note before we get started, though, I just want to welcome you if you're new here to Flea Market Rescue. My name is Kelly Sherry, and I do a lot of home decor makeovers and furniture flips. Also, I love taking you along as we go thrifting, garage sailing, and flea marketing. So if you're interested in learning how to do some of this and you love a great shopping adventure, then I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. Oh my gosh, you guys, last week was so crazy. We got hit with a big ice storm. And well, just take a look here. We're literally driving home in an ice storm. How crazy are we? Little did I know when we were driving home that we were going to lose power for three days. Yep, three long, cold, miserable days. So thank you everyone for your prayers and for your well wishes. I really appreciate it. I read all of them and I'm just so thankful for all of you. So I don't need to tell you because you know there was no video because of the power outage. But hopefully this will make up for it. We have seven trash to treasure projects. We started off with all this that I got at the thrift store. Yes, quite unsightly, but we're going to make it beautiful. I've always wanted one of these pigs. Ask me why, I don't know, but I've always wanted one, just never got one. Well, that all changed when I came across this pig at the thrift store. So he was cute, but his chalkboard had seen better days, and he was painted all different colors. The base was green, his scarf was gold, he had blue pants, and just there was a lot going on with him. I wanted to give him a clean and classic look. So I started by covering up his chalkboard with some paper and some painter's tape. I then took him outside and using Rust-Oleum Flat Protective Enamel, I sprayed him entirely white. Once I finished with the front of him, I walked around to the back and sprayed the back entirely as well. All right, so I sprayed him white and I think he looks just awesome. He looks like new. Just look at him. But now we have to work on the sign. That sign needed a little bit of work. So I'm going to take this paper off and then we're going to work on the sign. Now, after taking the paper off, you can see that there is like some problems here. Even the chalkboard doesn't look that great either. And this here, it looks like they tried to repair this at one point. So we're going to take a little anti Sloan paint and we're going to make this look really nice wood grain and then I'm going to freshen up this chalkboard as well. I'm going to use some of this Rust-Oleum um, chalkboard paint. I know you can't really see the label because I've used it so much but um, yeah it's just chalkboard paint in black by Rust-Oleum. So we're going to freshen this up. We're going to just add a little. I'm just kind of stirring this up real quick and then I'm using a foam brush and we're just going to go over it. I did get a little on there, but it's no big deal because we're repainting that, if you remember. All right, so we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna go back in. We're gonna go back in and we're gonna paint the sides. All right, so our chalkboard is completely dry and we're just gonna tape it up and that way we don't have to worry about it getting ruined. All 
All right, I think that's good. We're gonna use some of this French linen by Annie Sloan and we're gonna do the whole board here. So now that we have that painted, we're just gonna let that dry, and then we're gonna add a little dark wax to it, and I think it's gonna be sharp. All right, this is completely dry. I'm gonna take a little of this black wax that I have from YSL, and we are just gonna darken that up a bit. Just gonna rub a little of that on. And you just want to take a cloth and just kind of over it a bit. If you feel like you have too much black wax, you can always go over it with some clear wax and that just kind of gets rid of it. I just think that this is making it a little like wood grain. just going to take the paper off. For the most part, it looks pretty good. I'm just going to have to touch up a little bit of chalk paint right there. Chalkboard paint, I should say. And will you just look at him? Love, love, love him. I think he came out amazing and he's a keeper. So a while back, I ended up getting this and as you can see, it's just totally broken. The little latch there is gone. So this thing just kind of hangs. Now because of that, it was $7.99, but they ended up giving it to me for $3.99, which I think was quite a deal. So we are gonna fix that other side. This side works fine, as you can see. Uh, yeah. So this one is perfect, but this side just swings. So let's fix this. I had went to Ace Hardware and this is a spacer. husband told me all you need is a little spacer so this little part here we are gonna we're gonna replace by gluing that on here all right so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some epoxy glue and we're gonna glue this on here and then we're gonna wire it so let's do that now So I have my little spacer here and we're gonna use a little of this gorilla glue to attach this to the top. Okay. Now we're probably gonna want it to lay like so it can glue, so it can properly stay on there. And I'm gonna mix this epoxy. You want to mix two equal parts and I'm just going to mix this with that piece of wire I cut. And we're going to take that little piece and glue that right on there. If I can find it. Oh, now I dropped it. 
Okay, so I have the little piece here and now we're gonna go ahead and glue that. I'm just gonna put some of that on the back. And I'm also just gonna put some right here too. And I'm gonna let that dry overnight. Okay, so I have that little spacer there, all glued on there. We're gonna let that sit and dry overnight. And then we'll come back and we will fix the window with some wire. But in the meantime, let's make some cute little potted plants for this um, terrarium. I have these little terracotta pots that I got from Joann's and we are just going to paint these black are gonna look better if I just paint a little white over them with the black it's gonna make them look distressed so let's just do that All right, so we're gonna let these dry and then we're gonna do the greenery. So our cups are all dry. I'm gonna take this piece of styrofoam and I'm gonna cut a little bit out so we can stick them in here because we're gonna make some plants and they need to be able to stay in there. So you just wanna take your styrofoam and just kinda cut it where It'll be able to stay in there. We'll glue that in there actually. This is so tight, I don't even think we need to glue it. Okay, so that one's good. Let's see if we got another winner here. Yep, that's really tight in there too. All right, we just need one more. This one might be a little too big. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And then we're gonna take a quarter inch dowel rod and we're gonna insert it into the middle of this pot here. I'm gonna cut this down to, I'm gonna cut this down to about right here. And we're gonna do three. All right, so now we have our three sticks and we're gonna put it right in the middle of our pots. So there's three. Then I got these from the thrift store for $2.99. They're just little moss balls. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two. We're gonna put one right here and then one right at the top. But before we do that, I think that we should paint the sticks. So let's do that. We're gonna stain these sticks with a little dark wax. Now 
that we got those stains, we're gonna go ahead and pick out some balls. Looks like some are bigger and some are smaller, so we'll get three small and two larger ones. Well, I'm three, sorry, three larger ones. We're gonna put the larger one at the bottom. Just kind of work your way. Pushing that down. And we'll top it off with a small one. How cute is that, huh? So I think what we need to do next is just kind of glue these a little in place because they have been moving around now that we're poking holes and stuff in them. So kind of make sure that's right in the center. We don't want it going anywhere. Now I have some of this reindeer moss. I got it from the dollar store. It's really, you know, cheap, it's a dollar. And we're just gonna use some of that right in here. Just to cover up this styrofoam. Now we're gonna take just some of this moss. It's just like um, an all natural kind of moss. And we're gonna gather that around the top. Cause you got two kind of greens here and this is just gonna kind of balance that. Okay, so our little piece has been glued on there really good. As you can see, like I can pull on it. It's on there good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm literally just gonna wire this kind of shut because we have this other one here that's completely functional and that's all you really need to get in here. After wiring it shut, I took a little white paint and just kind of blended it a little. We need to clean this up, so I have a little razor blade. We're gonna get the price tag off, and then we're gonna clean all the glass. So we had cleaned the glass, and we made our little plants here. So we're just gonna put them right in there. and three. We can even add some moss at the bottom here. I'm gonna use one of my hang tags on this terrarium because I just think it's just gonna add, like I told you guys before, I just think hang tags really 
just give your item a nice finished look. So whenever I can use them, I really do use them. They come in a set of six and they're downloadable so you can download them however many times you want. And you can add them to all your things. I have a big variety of them. Just take a little, I got this at the dollar store, paper punch. And we're gonna add a little jute around here. And now we're gonna hang that on our terrarium. Hang it around this post. I think that'll look good there. And then you could put your prices on there too, which is nice. So there you go. All right, I don't know if you guys remember, but when I was at Springfield, I picked up this, it says cookies bucket. It's just like this old kind of bucket. And we are gonna freshen this up and bring it into today. So what I wanna do is I've done them in white, but, but we're gonna do it in black this time. I think this is gonna look really sharp. So we're going to take our cookies bucket here and we're going to use some of this junk monkey paint and black velvet. I'll leave a link where you can get this because it is some really good stuff here. So we're just going to start painting this. And the one thing I love about chalk paint is you don't have to prep or do anything. It just will automatically cover anything. We're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll do the inside and then underneath as well. Now that this is dry, we're gonna paint the bottom of it. And if your paint is a little thick like mine, you can just put a little water on your brush and it'll go a long way. You know what, I don't know. Maybe we should leave this maybe natural. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, you know what, we, no. You know, I'm gonna paint the inside of it. It's not like we're putting food or anything in it, so. Now, if you were gonna put food in there, I would suggest to not paint the inside, but since we're simply gonna be putting flowers and things like that in there, we don't have to worry about it. All right, our bucket is completely dry now. We're gonna take a little sandpaper and we're gonna distress it. I'm going to use some clear anti-sloan wax on our bucket here. As you can see, it's really distressed and it looks nice, but it needs a sealer. 
and Annie Sloan clear wax is the perfect thing to put on it. So we're just gonna kind of rub some of that on there. As you'll notice, the wax just brings out the really rich tones in the wood that we just dropped. By distressing this bucket, it just made it look really like old and it's been around for centuries. Now I think this bucket looks great on its own. However, you know what, we could put some of this uh, cotton in there and I think that would look really awesome. So let me just kind of arrange that a little. Get this tag off here. I think this bucket looks great in black. It has a classic look. And then when you add the cotton, it's just like a natural element to it. You can leave the lid off or you could just simply rest it on the side. This is just a really simple project and this would look good in any kind of setting. I picked up these signs at um, the St. Vincent de Paul. It says $3.99, but I think it was half off day. I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure. So anyway, we are going to change these because I don't really care for them. I actually bought them because I love the slats in them, and I thought they would make really good signs. So what we're going to do is we are going to paint these all white. We're going to get rid of the vegetables. We're going to paint right over it. It may take two coats, and if it does, that's completely fine. So this is dry, but it definitely, I can read it. I need some peace and quiet. So we definitely need to look at holy guacamole. We definitely need a second coat on these, so let's go ahead and do that. So I have these little cutie patootie birds here. They're so cute. Um, they're actually from my new spring line. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take a look at what I got for spring. So we have this spring variety of these little cutie patootie birds. It comes in a set of four. They're wood cutouts. And we're going to be using them in a project here shortly. We have these spring watering cans. These are also cutouts. We have a two pack of garden gates, which I think are really cool. We have a pair of gardening gloves that are also wood cutouts. There's a variety of Easter bunnies, which are so stinking cute. And if those weren't cute enough, everyone's buzzing about this variety of bees. And we can't forget these adorable little chicks. And I'm super excited to show you this wonderful bunny garland. So this is like a kit. What you're going to receive is six bunnies that have pre-drilled holes. You'll also receive wire and jute so you can string them along. And then also you will receive final letters that spell out Easter. So now it's totally up to you whether you want to use the little balls or you want to use fabric but that's something that you would purchase separately on your own. This kit is only for the bunnies, the wire, the jute, and the vinyl lettering, but it's super cute when you put it together either way. And the best part is everything is 15% off. Yes, we're having a sale and everything will be 15% off for one week. And you can find all these items in my Etsy store. Um, those all launched today. So we're gonna paint these black here. Since we've been using the, the Junk Monkey paint, I'm just gonna use the same paint and paint these all black. Oh, I should have 
probably covered my brush. That's all right. Okay, so now we're just gonna let these dry and then we'll add them to our picture. To our sign. All right, our little birds are all dry and we are gonna put some jute, like they're standing on a little bit of a wire. We're just gonna wrap that around and we're gonna hot glue it. And then we're also gonna hot glue the bird as well. So let's do that. So we probably wanted about that right there so I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna hot glue that into place take our little bird and just gonna kind of glue him in place I'm gonna do the same thing with the other bird I then designed a saying in Silhouette Studio and I cut it out on my Silhouette Cameo. I peeled back the extra vinyl and weeded out any extra little pieces of vinyl that needed to come out. After applying some transfer tape, I put my design down on the board and I carefully peeled back the transfer tape. I then repeated the same process with the other one. These came out just too stinking cute. These would be perfect in a child's room. You can make one for your grandkid or your kid. They were super easy to make and I will make the decals available in my Etsy store as well. A while back when I was out thrifting with my mom and Debbie, I came across these. bright colors on here and look at I only paid $3.99 for these I think they're really cool but again uh, I'm not a big fan of these colors here so we're gonna do something very cool with this and I think you're gonna really like it so first things first we're gonna need to paint this white I'm gonna get this all off of here and then we're gonna paint that white We're just using some of this paint primer in one. It's called Pure White. It's a Sherwin-Williams color. I had it mixed at Home Depot. So I'm just gonna paint this all white. So we're gonna let these dry. We're gonna flip them over after they're dry and paint the backs. All right, so these are completely dry now. We're gonna flip them over and then we're gonna paint the back. And if you see anything, like look at there, I missed a spot there. We're gonna have to touch that up too because you don't want any of those bold colors coming through. All right, so we had painted these and they're completely dry. I had gotten this paper for my mom. It looks like tin, like the, the tin ceilings, but it's like a wallpaper type thing. This is actually wallpaper, but it's textured to look like old tin. 
oh, that wow. people would put on a ceiling or uh, a wall. And wow. also, this can be painted any color. Wow, you could put that on really anything. Anything. You could put it on uh, just a regular can, even. True. It has it, a lot of possibilities you know with what? it. Instead of actually cutting out tin, it would be so much easier for people to do. And I'm sure it comes in a lot of prints, too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Where mm -hmm. did you get that? Well, I bought this a few years back. Uh -huh. Probably Goodwill Salvation Army, and I remember I only paid two dollars, and it's a pretty big roll. Oh yeah, too. for sure. You could do a lot of projects yep. with that. So that was a good find. That was a good find, and I'm going to use some of that on today's project. So we're going to cut a square. So we're going to cut some out here. Now in order to glue this on, we're going to use some Mod Podge. So we're gonna put a thin layer of that and then we're gonna put our paper right on top. So now we're gonna take our piece and we're gonna lay it right on top and just kind of press down on it. We're gonna let that dry. And while that's drying, let's get it on this one as well. So again, you're just gonna use the Mod Podge and put a nice layer of it all over. So now we are gonna add that piece right on top. Take your hand and just really rub that on there, and we're gonna let that dry. All right, so our Mod Podge is dry, and this paper is now on. So I'm gonna take some sandpaper here, and I'm just gonna kinda go around the edges to get the excess paper off. As you can see, it's lifting up here, and you're just gonna do that all the way around. Now that we have this one here all done, we're gonna work on the rooster. So it's just the same process. You're just gonna take your sandpaper, go around so that it lifts up and follows the shape. I think these are looking pretty darn cool. So we're gonna paint these black, then we're gonna paint them white. You can use any kind of black paint. I'm just using Junk Monkey because I have it. But again, you can even use acrylic paint if you want. So we're just gonna go over this tile. I'm trying to get deep in there because 
the white paint is just gonna kind of touch the surface and we really want some of this black to show through. So if you kind of get in there with your brush, those kind of parts are gonna shine through, which is really gonna make this ceiling tile, well, it's not a ceiling tile, but it looks like it. It's gonna make it pop. We're gonna repeat the same process on the rooster, and we're gonna let them dry. All right, so these are completely dry now, and we're gonna put white paint over it. Now, we're not gonna put it on every single inch of it, because we want some of that black to shine through to show the detail. We're gonna let this dry here. After they dried, I realized, you know what, they just need a little bit more white paint, so I added a little bit more to it and then let that dry. And now we're just gonna go over it with a little sandpaper just to bring out some of that darkness. I love how these are turning out, and you could put them on anything. You could put them on bunnies, you could put them on cans, like my mom said. So this is really a cool project with a lot of possibilities. Just look at all that detail. This came out so nice. I cannot wait to use this wallpaper on other things. I'd have to say the rooster was my favorite. I bought this cutting board at the thrift store. As you can see, it's nothing special. Obviously someone kind of tried to make it look um, old, but they didn't do the other side. So we are gonna take the cutting board and then I also have this little drawer that I found at the thrift store and we're going to marry the two. This has some kind of foam or something that was stuck in there but anyway we're going to marry the two. I'm going to glue this together and uh, it's going to look really cool. I'm just going to paint this white here so that it does look a little bit like our little drawer we, we have. We don't have to cover it all because that other one is quite distressed. Take a look with this box here. Oh yeah, that's good. So we're gonna let this dry. And once it's dry, we're gonna just kind of do the same thing with the back. And then we're gonna glue these two together. So this is completely dry. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna paint the other side just so it looks, you know, nice and finished. Again, we don't have to cover everything. This is mainly just to blend it in with that box. All right, so now that our cutting board is dry, now we are gonna glue these two pieces together. So I'm gonna use the epoxy glue here. You just wanna mix equal parts. And then we're gonna glue these two pieces together. So I'm getting two equal parts of the epoxy. I'm just gonna cut a little piece of wire that I that way I can mix it. And on the back of this drawer. I'm just going to put some of that epoxy. Oops. <laughs> Yikes. I was knocking all kinds of stuff down, aren't I?
I'm gonna mix a little bit more. Line both of these up. I'm going to let this dry overnight. Make sure that this is perfect here. And I think it does look perfect. So we're going to let these two pieces dry together. We'll let them dry overnight and then we'll decorate this. All right, our box in our breadboard is completely glued together now. And I thought, you know, it'd be fun if we used an IOD stamp. I have these really cool ones that have bees and some French sayings. And I think that we're gonna use like a little bee, put maybe like a little bee right here in the corner. And then on the back, we could do maybe like this. So let's get these out. Let's take this French one, and then we'll get the smaller B because it is a smaller drawer. Now, I've used this one before, but I've never used the little B. So you always want to condition your stamps before you use them. You just want to run a little sandpaper over them. And that should be good. And I'm going to take a little black paint here. You can use ink, but I always use paint when I when I use these stamps. I use paint all the time. So you can use any kind of paint. You can use just like a acrylic paint. What I do is I just paint it on some tin foil, a real thin layer. And that kind of acts like ink. Then I, pray, I, uh, then I place my stamp in there. Just kind of want to make sure it has some ink on it. Not too much though. That looks like it's covered well. And we're gonna put that on the back of our board here. So I'm just gonna flip that upside down and we're gonna place that right in the middle. And then I'm gonna press down You wanna make sure that you don't shift your stamp or else it's gonna be very smeared. All right, the moment of truth here. There we go. I think that looks pretty cool. And then now we're gonna take that B that we had and we'll also put that in the paint. Again, I might have to put a little bit more. Put your B in there. That's pretty good. Be fine. And right in the corner, we're going to put our little bee.
well, I guess it could be a little better. <laughs> All right, so I didn't really care how that B came out, so I wiped it off and I added a little white paint on top of here. We're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna, I might try something else because I wasn't too crazy about the B. So let's, let's see what else we can use. So, as you know, I stamped this with a B. I did not like that, so I wiped it off, added a little white paint. Anytime that you don't like something, don't be afraid to change it because, again, it is just paint. So, what I decided to do is, my husband had found all these old numbers and letters, like typeset. So I have this nine that I painted black, and I think I'm just gonna glue that right there Kind of like that I'd rather have that than the B <laughs> so we're gonna glue that on and then let's decorate this I'm just gonna put this on with a little hot glue but I need to touch that up just a tad here. Okay, so that's good. All right, now that we have our box all together here, I think we're gonna add a little of this lavender. I got this at Walmart. I think it was like 247. It really was not that much. And then maybe we could also add a little lamb's ear in there too. But before we do that, I'm gonna wrap some jute around here. I just think it's just gonna add and make it look a lot nicer. So I'm just gonna take some of this jute that I have. It's just a thin type jute. I'm gonna tie it in the back here and kind of zigzag it around. I just think it softens it up. It gives it a little more of a natural kind of look. And then when we add our flowers, it's just gonna be awesome. Kind of put some of this lavender in there. And then again, we'll use that lamb's ear. I think that just softens that up a bit too. And I think we should use a hang tag on this too. I think a hang tag would just be wonderful. So we're just gonna use one of these hang tags that I sell in my, in my Etsy store and then on my website. I think that hang tags really give it a finished look. In the end, I think this came out beautiful, and if this isn't a seller, I don't know what is. I bought this frame, and as you can see, it looks really, really bad. But I love the frame. I like the hardware on it, I love the clip, but I really do not like <laughs> that it needs some work here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna take a razor blade and just kinda Try to scrape some of that off. Now I'm just gonna take a paper towel and kind of go over this to clean it. And as you can see, it's still really scuffed up. It looks pretty bad. What I thought would look really cool 
is if this was black as well. I think it would just give it like such a classic look. I'm gonna take some of this junk monkey paint and we are gonna paint this black. and we're gonna just let that dry. All right, so this is now dry, and I'm just gonna take a little piece of sandpaper and just kind of rough up the edges a bit. Now we just needed a picture, and I thought Graphic Fairy would be the perfect place to get one. So I scrolled down, and I was looking for some type of pig, and I think we found him. We're going to print this out on some craft paper and we're going to clip that to our board. I printed out this print here, which I want to fit on here. So we're going to just cut that out. I love this um, cutter because it is so accurate. There's a little wire in here and it just cuts the exact thing that you need. If you go on my Amazon um, store, I have all the products that I use. There's links that you can purchase exactly what I use. I'll leave a link in the description for my Amazon store. That way you can check out all these different products. You just wanna go to Office Supplies and it'll be right in there. It's the um, sure cut. I use these for my Etsy orders. So I think that looks pretty cute. Let's see. I really like that. And if we wanted, we could kind of like add a little more to this. I have some of this natural cotton. We could, you know, cut a little branch, stick some underneath here. That would look cute too. So yeah, I think this looks really good. Well, that's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget about our sale. You can save 15% off your entire purchase on Etsy. And that sale goes from March 2nd to March 9th. I'll leave all the links in the description to everything that was mentioned here in this video. If you like this episode of Flea Market Rescue and you want to see more episodes, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.